I'm here today as a citizen of southwestern Pennsylvania, Washington County to be specific. My name is Shakira Johnson. Pennsylvania is the second producer, leading producer of natural gas in the United States next to Texas. And then the county that I live in, Washington County, is the leading gas producer in the whole state the most fracked area in Pennsylvania. My family owns property here in Washington County. We bought the property probably when I was 14 years old, so that was many moons ago. My parents eventually, in 2012, decided to build their house and live on the property. At the same time, our, our gas well was being fracked for the second time. So as they were building the house, my parents watched as they were expanding the gas well pad on their property across, directly across the street from their new house. Now in this area, we are brought up, I'm a coal miner's daughter. My family, a long line of industrial workers, mills, glass plants. We live near the Three Rivers, if you've ever heard of that in um, Pittsburgh. We live near the Monongahela River here in Washington County, along with all kinds of waterways, lakes, creeks, creeks as we call them here. Nonetheless, when they were fracking the area for the second time, I was paying close attention as my parents were building their house, so I was there a lot. The amount of traffic on this, it used to be a dirt road basically, or around here we call them red dog roads. It used to be a red dog road. It's been paved since then. We would have dozens. I don't know if you've ever seen a line of water trucks, dump trucks, heavy equipment, earth moving, things that you could never even imagine. I always kind of considered it was like a UFO landing pad with all the lights and the noise. As they fracked more, it was like a football field with lights glowing and you could smell the fumes from what they were doing. The traffic lined up down this basically one lane road in the country it was pretty amazing. Grew up with the air quality in the area. I can remember being a young girl and the smell in this area was really strange. And it wasn't until the smell left that we realized how bad the air quality really was. Now with the coal industry, they cleaned their act up a lot. We no longer had the smells of the Coke ovens. The rivers were cleaned up from all of the mills. Again, some of the mills closed down. A lot of the industry left the area, unfortunately, for those of us who made money that way. But it was just a sign of the times, I guess. When all of that subsided, our waterways were cleaner. River otters came back. We now actually have eagles in our area that came back. Well, now, that this area has been fracked, we no longer have fresh air. We live in the country. We don't keep our windows open. You can't open your windows and get fresh air and cool the house down or freshen your house up, clear the stink out, so to speak. There's not fresh air. Like I said, my dad was a coal miner his whole life. He was also a Vietnam veteran. And when he was younger, he also worked in mills and plants of that sort. Well, come 2019, September of 2019, one month after I got married, my dad became very sick. From September 2019, October, November, each week, each month, his health declined. What he was having was neurological issues. Numbness, tingling in his hand. By the time the first week in January came around, 
He could no longer walk. We pushed him in a wheelchair for his testing, and they sent him directly to the hospital. He was hospitalized with intensive physical therapy in their rehab facility in the local hospital for three months. Basically, he was paralyzed from the waist down. He went from a farmer that cut wood. He rode his bike 10 miles a day. He took care of my mom who had dementia. He had 120 acres. He mowed that, he weed whacked that. That is very hard work. He did that all himself. Sometimes he would get my kids to help him. Sometimes my brother helped him. He did that all himself though. Took care of cows, horses, a mule. He went from that to not even being able to walk or take care of himself. Come March of 2020, they were going to lock the hospital down due to COVID. So we immediately had him discharged home. My dad worked so hard doing his occupational therapy, physical therapy, to try to regain his strength. He used a walker at this point. We had to have 24 hour care for my parents at this point. I'm a licensed practical nurse. I understand medical things to a degree. Um, eventually they did diagnose my dad with chronic inflammatory polyneuropathy disorder. I think that's like CIPD, I think it's called. And as he went through his physical therapy, he did continue to tell me, I feel like I'm not getting better. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse. Well, come June of 2020, he'd been home for a few months at that point, he called me home from work. And he had wanted to show me a lump under his armpit. He had a port, so I thought it was affiliated with his port. I thought he had an infection, maybe. They put him on an antibiotic. They did an ultrasound. They biopsied it. Truthfully, I really didn't consider the diagnosis they gave us. It really wasn't a consideration. They told us he had a very rare salivary gland cancer in his armpit. Come to find out, he had myoepithelial carcinoma. It's non-genetic. It's very rare. There aren't any standards to, to treat it. His oncologist out of Pittsburgh had no idea how to treat it. The radiologist had never seen it. Johns Hopkins University didn't know how to treat it. So, we proceeded on in June and started the journey through chemotherapy. He never even did make it to radiation treatment. At this point though, he had this cancer. When they diagnosed him with it, he had this cancer all through his body, along his armpit, the back of his neck, his parotid glands in his face, and maybe in his cerebellum. Like I said, we didn't get to that. We didn't get that far at that point. Nonetheless, he worked really, really hard. We made the, helped him make the choice to proceed on with chemotherapy. At one point, his nurse practitioner would make house calls. I even pointed out to his health nurse practitioner, look how close this gas well is to my parents' house. I'm a bad determiner of how far it is, but right across the street from their house, right across this little road. I don't know, is that a thousand feet? Maybe 500 feet. Yeah, 500 feet I think is legal to build a gas well. That's why I was like 500 to a thousand feet. Very, very close. And again, they had water well. The noxious fumes they breathed, breathed every single day. Nonetheless, my dad lost his battle after being diagnosed with the cancer. Oh, and by the way, the lump under his armpit, he finally did divulge to me that he had that for a whole year before he told anyone. So even before he was hospitalized, he had this lump. So we will never know, but I always have a feeling that this neurological 
illness that he came down with probably is correlated with the cancer that he had. His body was, it was an autoimmune response, I do believe. But again, we'll never know, as no one knows about this cancer. Well, my dad succumbed to his cancer in October of 2020 after a long, horrendous fight. Long meaning a few months, it seemed like forever to us. Some people can go years with these cancers. This cancer was very aggressive and very quick. And sadly, my mom died one month later of a broken heart. I'm here to almost plead to the current administration, local politicians, local community members, to reevaluate the methane air quality standards that they're trying to take away from us. At this point, again, we have no fresh air here. We have no fresh water here. You can't, fil you can't filtrate heavy metals out of your water. You can't do that. We don't know what we're breathing. Not long ago, I went to a meeting, a town hall meeting, they called it, put on by EQT. EQT is the biggest natural gas producer in the United States of America. Well, the CEO showed us many slides, and he certainly indicated that through research and based upon science, that fracking is safe for us. Now, once again, please do not take these standards away. Please reconsider methane, air quality, and water quality at the same time due to fracking in the gas well industry.